Well, that's two panels done. So are you ready? Next two panels, part two. Okay, so ready to go with panel three now. Um, and this one has, um, what are these called? Clownfish. Is that what they are? Yeah, an enemy fish, clownfish. Oh, listen to that, an enemy fish. It's probably just as well because we're going to do some anemones here. So, um, little clownfish, Nemo's, most people know them as, I think. Um, and I've got some kind of yellowy ones and some orange ones, um, as you can see glued those in place so that's good so we're happy with that um, so what I'm going to use now is we have a whole heap of this stuff so hopefully you can see in here um, that there's a, a huge variety of colors this is vitrograph confetti um, it's available on our website as most of this stuff is um, so you can have a little rummage around there and see what you like I've got quite a few nice um, bits and pieces in here that I've pulled out already, but I can see some that I like, so I'm going to take those as well. So we have um, all sorts of wonderful mixtures, and um, there's a couple of things that I did here. First of all, I actually fused some pieces together and created little bits of coral. Um, I wanted some extra bits on there, so I'm going to add some of those. So I'm going to glue those in place because we want to create um, a sort of coral garden here. Um, so let's, I think I actually want that down there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just to make sure this goes in place. And just pop that there. And you can build all sorts of shapes um, of corals with this. There we go. And wonderful colours. I think I want that that way up. So let's put him that way up. Maybe this is a, a bit bigger piece of uh, coral. So we'll, we'll add some of these extra bits on. Just glue them in place. Make sure we're happy with what we produce. There we go. So there are all sorts of nice bits down there. Um, and then these are some of the stringers. So this um, all was uh, part of some of, I think, the candy apple um, marini that we produce. Produces these lovely curly bits um, of pattern um, in the tube that um, comes out of the end. So I'm going to take these. And these are perhaps um, they're nice and curly. Let me just get um, a little dab of glue on here so we can use that. So these, I think, will be, you know, sort of the long um, frondy type corals that you can get. And I know that clownfish quite like to go in and around the anemones, so we're going to create something similar in a minute coming out of the top of these uh, tubes. I quite like this. It just makes a change from actually having the um, grasses on there. Just pop that underneath. Perhaps we've got that there. That's quite nice. Um, this is uh, extra fine uh, French vanilla stringers um, that I've pulled. And the reason I pulled extra fine is I wanted something for whiskers for cats because um, I was doing a, a lot of pet portraits with enamel glass. Um, but then once you start looking at anemones and the shapes of anemones, these make perfect little uh, sort of anemone shapes. So let's have some more of that. Pop that down there. And these fish have got somewhere to mooch in and out of. mooching in and out of there. It's quite nice. So these flat bits are just where I've sort of flattened it as I've pulled it. 
and they are quite uh, quite nice shapes. Let's just put that in there. And then I think we're going to have something that's quite bright orange down here, which is quite nice. Let's pop that in place here. And maybe this bit lives over here. And then these, again, we've got some extra fine stringers. But these are a part of the orange stringers. Get a little bit of glue. And perhaps these are the anemone bits that come out the top. Obviously you need to use your imagination. Let's see if we can get a bit more glue on that. certainly wet enough for tropical fish. You probably can't hear it, but it is absolutely pouring down outside. Let's see if I can pop some of this glue down here. It might be better. There we go. That's better. So these are sort of the little worms that come out of the tubes looking for food. Like doing surgery, this, isn't it? <laughs> Be really delicate with it. There we go. <laughs> Nearly there. So you just need the little bendy bits which work quite well for this. Don't forget you need some going one way, some going the other way. So you've got them all over lapping. That looks a bit more natural that way. Need a steady hand for this. Okay, I think we'll have a couple more down there, and then that is finished, and we can put some bubbles and some blue plumes of water, the same as we did for the other one. I think I've got glue all over. There we go. That's better. Okay, so I quite like that. I think that looks um, enough of a coral reef. So we can move that out of the way and um, mask back on because we're going to go with our blue water again. So let's do our plumes. Just a little bit. Lovely. A little bit of our light aqua. So that other one was light turquoise. This is light aqua frit. I don't think I put any on my seahorses, so I'm going to do go back and do that in a minute. There we are. Just little bits just to suggest that we've got water. And the last thing to do is to put our beads on. I'm not going to put too many on this one. 
just going to have three plumes, I think, of beads. There we go. Make sure you don't move that too much. That's going to fall. There we go. Put the beads on. And that's your third panel then done. Absolutely rocketing through this, aren't we? Okay. So I think we like this. Ooh. It's got a little bit of blue in it, but I'm quite happy with that. Marvellous. Okay, cool. So that's three panels done and we're just about ready to do the last one. Time for the last panel. This is panel four and uh, I've already um, glued my blue tangs in place. Um, you might remember at the beginning you saw it laid out like this with these on top. So um, this is just a piece of glass um, that I simply cut out of a, a long piece of glass. Um, so it's a nice sort of organic looking shape. You can do it any shape you want really. The reason I've done this is I want to use copper inclusions. Now, um, this here is uh, just a, an ordinary stamp. If you're into making cards, um, you can get these at most hobby shops. Um, and if you put something inside it, paper or uh, in this case, copper, um, you can just press it and you can see the die pushes through and cuts out your shape for you. So that's what I've done and I've now got these. Now um, the copper that I use is quite um, a fine copper sheet but it's got this sticky back um, glue on it so it's difficult to get off, just need nails, there we go and it's now sticky. So um, the copper itself has got this sticky on it, but that sticky burns off. So I'm just going to press that onto there and that will glue that in place for me. So just take the backs off all of these. Glue them into place wherever you want them to be on this plume. If you put copper um, onto your glass and you don't cap it, then quite often it can burn off and we don't really want that to happen so it just um, it just goes black generally it's not pleasant so i'm gonna use this as a capping now you don't have to use a piece of glass you could use um, crystal clear fine frit like this but i quite like this sort of look that we've, we're going for here. I'm just going to glue these in place. There we go. Oop. You don't want to go in. Move those out of the way. So those are my fish. So they're all neatly glued onto there. If we didn't, uh, as I say, if we didn't want to use this and, we, and you wanted to use, oh, that's fine for it, this powder that you want, not fine for it. So this is crystal clear powder. Um, the reason I say don't use the frit is the frit can, um, obviously it's a, a fine frit, whereas the powder is actually finer still because it's obviously a powder. Um, so this is a much better option to go over the top of the copper. All it's doing is encasing it to stop it really turning the black. So we've glued all of those onto there. So those are my, that's the side with my copper fish on there. And what I'm going to do is have that on here. So we've got this plume of uh, coppery fish that are going up. So let's move this out the way. because there's a couple of other things that I um, want to do with this. OK, so we're going to use some copper oxide. So copper oxide is the stuff that you use. You can use um, bicarbonate of soda as well. Um, but copper oxide, I find, is better to produce blue, blue bubbles um, in your glass. If you use uh, bicarbonate of soda, your, your um, bubbles tend to be just clear. 
Um, so this is not pleasant stuff uh, to be breathing in. So you definitely need to make sure that you're using a mask when you use this. So mix your copper oxide. What I do is I have some, let's find them, there we go. I have some spoons. Um, again, I think I got these from Amazon. Um, they're just quite useful because they're just small spoons. But I spooned out um, about half of that, so about that much of copper oxide and two of crystal clear powder. And I mix the two together. And I find that that works best for me to create these blue bubbles. So um, I'm going to put some of it up here and then when I actually, again, when you um, use copper oxide to make bubbles, it needs to be between two pieces of glass because obviously you need to capture the air to make the bubbles. Um, so this, um, we're just going to pop this plume on here. We're going to put some copper oxide underneath it. And I might even put some turquoise underneath it because the turquoise, which is this stuff that we've used um, before, um, will react with the copper as well. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to put my mask on. So I thought I'd explain it before I do it um, because you won't be able to hear me otherwise. So I might actually put this on properly. I've got both hands free. Lovely. Right, powder. So if you want to be sure that you get this in the right place. You remember your Sharpie burns off. So you can just draw around it. Let's get the pen going. There we go. So you can just draw around this roughly so that you know where your shape is. There we go. And then we're going to take a little bit of this. You know, you don't want too much of this at all. So when I say not too much, that's all you need. And that's going to create you this little plume of bubbles. It doesn't look thrilling at the moment because obviously it looks black. Um, but this will create some micro blue bubbles. I'm also going to, while we're here, put my powder on here. So it's all over. They look a bit regimented, don't they? Let's move him. I did actually glue all of these down, but I'm going to move that one because I don't like him there. Ooh. Move him over a little bit. There we are. So that's our blue uh, turquoise blue powder on there. I'm going to take this and remember there's your copper fish. They're on that side. So you want the copper fish side down. <laughs> I've drawn it the wrong way around. Oh dear. I'm going to move these. I'm going to put them on the other side. Bless. So I drew round it the wrong side. What a muppet. Let's move them. So he's probably going to have a strange coloured nose, which is absolutely fine. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this. Some little dots of glue. Because I don't want to be putting it on here to pick this up. And there we are. So that's covering all of that copper oxide. And obviously... That's um, covering the copper fish as well. Lovely, and that's so becoming. Um, and I think we shall have some weeds on here. 
So let's do that again with a few more weeds. It's a little bit of glue. Just drop that at the bottom so we've got somewhere for the weeds to be anchored to. There we are. I think we'll go that way round. And of course, all of these are going to go flat anyway. There's some lovely shapes here. Find some fine ones. Me tweezers. Put those in place. Again, some of these freeze and fuse, um, their tails were a bit strange, so I'll make sure the weeds go over the top. Lovely. I think we're probably happy with that. Maybe there's a few bits down here. Happy with that, jolly good. So I think the last bit is the bit we did on all the others. We've already got the blue turquoise powder, so we're just gonna put the aqua blue on here and a few beads and that's it. We have our lantern all good to go, waiting to be fired. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. So just put some beads on. I think this time we've perhaps got a little cascade of beads all along the top there. So these are the last bits. I'm going to be putting them too near the edge because um, obviously you want to make sure that your panels fit into your lantern frame. So just be aware of that edge. Don't go too close to it because otherwise you'll have problems when you assemble it again. So this is slightly different but at least it fits in with the rest of the panels and we'll show you all of them together in a second so you can see what they all look like. Obviously you can do whatever um, you want. We've done octopus before which um, have actually stretched over all of the panels. So we've had the head on one bit and the tentacles will actually go over other parts of the panels. Um, you can do the same with seahorses and things like that or dolphins or create yourself a scene with you know a tropical scene or something maybe with flamingos, dolphins, a massive wave, all sorts of options. Um, I guess it's, uh, it's down to your imagination. So those are my beads just back in there. Mm -mm, mm -mm. There we go. Well, let's put them all together and you can see what this looks like before it gets fired. Right, we're done. Finished our panels with our freeze and fuse elements, mostly fish, um, some shells which uh, work really well and a few little bits of uh, fronds. As I've moved these around, these, have, these weren't um, particularly glued so they've just mooched over to a different place so if you find any things like that that have moved before you put them in the kiln um, just make sure that they are back in place um, so we are well I'm happy with that I'm gonna fuse that now um, it's obviously quite uneven um, and for me that, that I love this I, I think the story looks really nice so it's going to have a quite a high cry factor uh, if it goes wrong. So 
Because these are reasonably thick, um, this certainly is thick, I'm going to make sure that I fuse this on a slow ramp up. Um, what you want to try and do is make sure that the heat is evenly distributed and you may want to extend that annealing hold as well um, and then slow it down as it cools. So I will show you the fusing schedule that I use. That's going to come up on the screen in uh, a minute and uh, we'll show you obviously what uh, the results of this look like when we've finished. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you on the other side of the fusing. So there it is finished and all fused together. Um, we put the panels together uh, in this particular type of lantern because it's, uh, it's very simple. So um, it reminded me of an aquarium. So I really, really like the way that looks. Um, if I turn that round, you can probably see that panel um, really well. This is where we put the punched out copper fish um, with the little plumes of copper oxide for the blue bubbles. really really happy with that hope you enjoyed the video uh, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and share and all those good things it really helps us out and thank you for watching um, and I hope we'll see you next time on the fired glass channel take care bye